Um, John Cadunas is the CEO of Calamos Investments and also a Concordia Leadership Council member. And he has really led by example since the pandemic hit, demonstrating the positive effects that can be realized with corporate citizenship. Earlier this spring, John foresaw the pandemic's far-reaching and long-term impact that the pandemic would have on society's most vulnerable populations, especially in his hometown of Chicago. So in response, he founded the Chicago CEO COVID-19 Coalition, and by rallying and challenging his peers in the business community, raised more than $1.3 million so far for those in need. So for this conversation, we're very happy to be joined by phone uh, by John Kadunas and anchor of Yahoo Finance, Akiko Fujita. Akiko? Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm certainly thrilled to be hosting this conversation with John. Uh, to your point, especially given John's leadership on the issue over the last six months or so, uh, a really important conversation, John, to be having at a time when we've been talking so much about this two-track recovery and the potential of growing income inequality coming out of this. Um, John, I'd love to get to your efforts in your community. But before we start on that, I'd love to just kind of get a sense of how things have evolved for you over the last six months as it relates to Calamos Investments. You certainly had to alter your operations very quickly, as many companies have had to. Um, what have the last six months been like for you as a CEO of a company juggling both the financial aspect, the economic downturn, but also the safety of your employees? Uh, well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I think Concordia, and I, I thank you as well. Uh, it's uh, obviously been uh, interesting times the last six months. Uh, we tried to, as much as we could, get ahead of this. Uh, our lobby uh, back in uh, uh, in February and beginning of March looked like a, a Best Buy. We had a lot of computers out there, so we made sure that if we had to go uh, work from home remote, that uh, all our employees had the equipment to do that. Our IT staff did an incredible job uh, in, in installing all of that without, uh, throughout the firm. Uh, so it's been, a, it's, uh, we, we got ahead of it and we were able to uh, work from home, even though we're an essential business and we never closed the office. We've had probably perhaps between 10 to uh, 15% of the employees rotating at, on their own free will to come into the office where we put a lot of different safeguards as well. But uh, we were able to uh, have somewhat of a seamless continuity to continue our business and, and maintain the service that we're used to giving our clients. Yeah, and John, on top of that, I know we spoke before this, but you mentioned that you haven't had to furlough anybody. So from a business management standpoint as well, you've been able to keep your employees on board uh, with safety as well as stability in mind. Correct. We haven't furloughed anybody uh, due to this uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic, and uh, we, uh, we don't plan on uh, as well um, as we go forward on this. And Hopefully, we will start to reinstate, uh, but we're watching. I'm speaking to my colleagues, uh, other CEOs in the city with similar businesses, and watching and looking at everybody, uh, along with, um, you know, obviously, the guidelines that are given to us by the, the governor and the mayor to, uh, to reopen here in Chicago. Let's talk about your efforts in the community. You founded Chicago CEO COVID-19 Coalition, rallying the business community at a time uh, that was pretty early on in the pandemic. We still had the business shutdowns in place, uh, concerns about where the economic recovery would eventually come back. How did this idea come about for you? What prompted um, this organization? Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, even though I, I uh, spent a lot of my time uh, and life living in New York. Um, and I love this city. I love Chicago. Uh, it's, it's one of the greatest cities in the world. And it really pained me to see uh, what was happening um, to our city because of this uh, pandemic. Uh, of course, we've had our share of homelessness. Uh, a share of issues uh, beforehand, and because of this, uh, it was extremely exasperated. So I wanted to do something 
I know that a lot of businesses, we're going to get hit. We're going to get hit hard, and as we did at the beginning. But I also knew that we were in a, in a position where we would at some point recover, uh, but not everybody would. So if we couldn't help uh, as a business community coming together, not just relying from the government and from others to help the people that uh, need it the most at the time and will continue to need it because it was more of a relief and recovery. Uh, although we did have four pillars, PPE was one of them, the personal protective um, equipment, but food was a, a main part of it. Shelter homelessness was another pillar that was extremely important to us. And then counseling services, because we know how important in terms of the recovery this is for people that are less fortunate, for people that uh, have gotten the disease, for people that have lost loved ones because of the disease, for people that lost their jobs, the businesses, the everlasting impact in terms of the psych psychology of this is terrible for a lot of the people. So that was another pillar that we wanted to make sure that we could get some money to, to help. So you established this organization, and let's talk about how you mobilize these efforts. You talk about the four pillars that you wanted to really address. You had that big telethon back in May, $1.3 million raised. Um, you have already distributed all of that, but how do you, as a business leader, go about trying to understand where, where the biggest needs are? And, and can you just help us understand where the $1.3 million has been applied to, what you have seen on that front? Sure. Uh, what we did was we picked 10 charities uh, that addressed all these issues. Uh, and I think that was uh, important uh, to hit all of them. As we've seen during the different cycle of this pandemic, uh, in the beginning, PPE was essential. We didn't have ventilators. We didn't have masks. We didn't have gloves, et cetera. Uh, so that was something that was addressed early on. And now we're seeing that uh, we have a lot of those, or at least we have uh, enough where even uh, ventilators aren't an issue uh, anymore like they used to be. So uh, we also knew because this is a, a relief and recovery that the other issues between homelessness and the counseling and food is always probably the most important. You'd be surprised how many people in the city uh, don't have enough to, to eat. And so uh, the charities that we picked, each one of them, and some of them ranged across the four pillars, but others uh, were concentrating in one of the four pillows, pillars. So what we did was just uh, pretty much... Um, divided equally all the money to the 10 charities that came in through um, our website that was uh, all uh, uh, filtered through uh, GoFundMe. So they did all that for us. And while we're talking about this in the context of the pandemic, you could certainly argue that um, there was a real vigorous debate even before COVID-19 hit about the role of businesses in their communities. And, you know, I was thinking back to the discussion that was happening with the business roundtable about prioritizing values over profit, moving away from just shareholder profits to a larger focus on communities and employees and customers. And I'm curious as somebody who's been very involved with their community throughout this crisis, would you say there's been a, a fundamental shift in the way, in the role of businesses in this crisis? Is this a COVID-specific thing, or do you think this is going to shift beyond this particular crisis? Well, I, I, I got to tell you that um, what we did was uh, what we called it uh, a telethon, video telethon, Sweet Home Chicago was the name of the telethon, Sweet Home Chicago Relief and Recovery. And what was really amazing about it is um, I reached out to a good amount of CEOs, not just in our business, but all types of business, from healthcare to finance, um, all across uh, manufacturing, all the ones that were headquartered in the metropolitan area of Chicago. 
And to see them come together was something that was extremely gratifying to me. And that was my payment that um, there wasn't a call that, uh, and a person that didn't pick me up. Most everybody, even people that had donated a lot of money, uh, companies that, uh, you know, and CEOs that have donated a lot of money, uh, they, uh, they said, hey, I just gave X, but I'm not going to say no to you because we're doing this collation to try to form this bond. Because, unfortunately, a lot of CEOs in the past, especially in finance, have not been painted with the, the best um, brush in terms of, uh, of, of, of you know, the, the people and who they are. And I, I don't think that's fair for everybody. And I thought this was a great opportunity for the city to come together, the business people to come together and, and help. And, and that's what we did. And not only did the CEOs come and help, but we did what, you know, a matching program in a lot of these companies where whatever the uh, employees put in that the companies, including Calamos Investments, would match that and, and also donate to this to this. And so that was incredible how the city came together and how they came together, the celebrities, the athletes, the comedians, um, the actors to do the Sweet Home Chicago Relief and Recovery um, telethon. And we had some incredible talent on it that was kind of the pinnacle for people to watch and to bring awareness to what we're doing. Most of the 90, over 90% of the money was raised before the telethon actually um, went on air and it aired a few times on TV. Yeah, it's incredible to see um, how quickly you were able to raise those funds. John, I I wonder if you think this call to action that you talked about, this ability for businesses to really rally behind a cause, if you think this translates to some other key issues that some would argue is also a crisis, whether it's the issue of climate or the issue of social inequality and justice, the protests that we have seen, how do you see the role of business in those particular issues? Is COVID-19 a very specific crisis that allowed businesses to rally around them? Or do you think businesses will increasingly take an active role in uh, trying to shift the conversation and lead the conversation and ultimately bring in the funds on some of these other key issues? Well, I think that uh, I'm optimistic and hopeful that they could. Uh, initially, this was really early on, and uh, uh, a lot of it was uh, done beforehand. But the, the beauty of the Chicago CO COVID-19 Coalition is a platform that uh, we hope to be able to go back to. And it doesn't, uh, we could uh, target other perhaps charities, target perhaps other issues like you mentioned in order to bring the business community together to try to help um, in bringing this great city back to where it was, because we are hurting. Uh, A lot of the great cities in this country are hurting. Um, And this this is an issue that unfortunately is not over. And for some, it's not over for a long time. And so I am hopeful that 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 will happen and that we can come together and solve uh, a lot more of these issues as we continue to hopefully solve the COVID issue as well. On that note, John, you've got a pretty good pulse, not just on the economy and um, where the recovery is, but also through your work in the community, you've really got an upfront uh, close view of, of what's happening um, as a result of this crisis, whether it's the issue of homelessness, uh, homelessness, or the issue of the need for mental health and help because of what's playing out. And I'm curious, when you look six months ahead, what worries you the most? What do you think is being overlooked right now in the broader conversation about a recovery? Well, um, that's a really good question because um, there are lingering effects uh, because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And some of those lingering effects are, look, the business community is coming together. But I have to admit, it's 
the business community that can help. And that was part of the plea. Those of us that can should, if not now, when. And I can't sit here and say that everybody in the business community, especially some of these small business com- uh, businesses, that won't be open in six months, that have already closed some of the restaurants, some of the smaller businesses, some of the retail. And that's something that we have to deal with from a society going forward, because it's not going to be uh, the same for everybody. And some people will recover at different rates. And so uh, to the extent that we could keep dipping in and helping each other and boost each other because uh, we're going to need it. Uh, I'm optimistic that we'll get there. We have an incredible human nature, and especially in this country, uh, we've seen it after 9-11. We've seen how we can come together, and I'm hopeful that we can too. But uh, even when we get some kind of vaccine, and, and we move forward in the stages of relief on the COVID issue, there's still a lot of damage uh, for a lot of people that we have to attend to. And there's going to, you know, there's no question that homelessness, the numbers, unfortunately, has increased. There's no question that, uh, you know, the suicides um, have increased. Um, and so we need to continue to double down and work on our efforts. Yeah, no question. A really good reminder that that the recovery um, is, is really a long road ahead here. And John, uh, really appreciate you joining us today. A uh, great conversation, especially just given um, all the talk about uh, this divide that we are likely to see coming out of this pandemic. John Kadunas, the CEO of Calamos Investments, uh, really great talking to you today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great talking to you.